Hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, gonna do a quick video today. I just want to talk to some of the newer, maybe some of the intermediate players that are struggling with coming up with builds for units. So I'm gonna take you in the journal real quick, and I'm gonna show you how you can look at the skills and look at the stats of a unit to determine what kind of gear you want to put on that unit. Um, I'm not sure what unit I'm gonna look at. I'll just get in here, and the first thing I feel like looking at, I'll click on. So let's just do view all down here. Charlotte, I'll pick you. I don't like you. I don't know what your skills do. All right. Let's see. First skill. Okay. Looks like above 50%, it increases attack. Below 50%, it decreases their defense. Decent skill one. Uh, situational, which isn't, isn't bad. Skill two. Um, hits all enemies, 25% chance of stun. Each time an enemy stunned, she gets some combat readiness. You know, pretty good. Not bad. Skill 3. Uh, it's an AoE. Deals more damage when she has more focus. When you soul burn it, it decreases the cooldown. Wow, it's a one turn cooldown. If you uh, get that. That's not bad. That's pretty cool. Um, she's a niche unit. I like building niche units. If I pulled her, I would probably try and build her just to use her. Uh, I would probably throw her on a tanky set with Elbrus. Because I think it would be fun. Um, she's got an attack percent imprint. Most knights don't have that. So that can kind of key in that she's more of a DPS unit than a tank unit. If I were to bet she has decent base attack based on that. Yep. Decent base attack. Not the highest. I think the highest in the game is Sermia. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, if I am, tell me who it is. Um, but 1134, that's not bad. Um, I can already tell off the bat, since she doesn't have a bad base attack, that attack subs are going to be better for her than a unit with lower attack for Charles for example I'll show you Charles so you can compare the two I believe it's it's like 980 or something I know it's like nine something but then you could you you can see in comparison yeah 957 all right so that tells me that Charlotte is gonna benefit more from an attack sub than Charles would okay Charles is also a DPS knight um, he just, that extra attack he lost kind of was redistributed to a little bit more health and a little bit more speed. And he probably has better modifiers than her too. Um, modifiers will help in determining your builds. Um, I don't know the modifier for every unit in the game. There's a post on Reddit that shows a unit's modifier somewhere. Um, I've looked at it a couple times. I think I have it bookmarked. If I can find it, I'll throw it in the description of this video so you can check it out. It's actually really useful information. Um, so yeah. Back to her stats. So we already established that she can be pretty decent with attack subs. Um, I will just come out and say every DPS unit in the game benefits from crit damage. Every DPS unit, unit in the game needs 100% crit. It doesn't have to be 100, it depends on what content you're using it for. If you're using a unit specifically for Wyvern, you can drop off that 15% because you get 15 from type advantage. Um, some units get you, get uh, crit from passives, like Luna. Luna doesn't have to push it that far. She can max out lower and still have 100% crit on fire. Um, for PvP, you're going to want 100% crit on most units because you're not always going to have type advantage. ML units will always want 100% crit if you're using it as a DPS or as close to that as you can get. Um, I wouldn't sacrifice, you know, going from, say, 90% crit to 100 and you're going to sacrifice 200, 200, 300, you know, a lot of other stats. Attack, for example. Like, I don't think that's a fair trade. It really depends on the unit. Um, so, yeah. Another thing you want to look at is, like, her skills have debuffs on them. Uh, stun doesn't really help you in PvE, so it's not that big of a deal. But she's a defense breaker. Granted, yeah, it is when they're lower than 50%, but she's still a defense breaker. So for PvE content, those units need effectiveness. If there's some kind of debuff on their skills, so, like, right here, she's got debuffs. Um, I, I'm pretty sure decreasing... Oh, her... Her combat readiness is increased, not decreased. But a combat readiness decrease is also affected by effectiveness, I'm pretty sure. So, 
Units that push combat readiness also need effectiveness. You, you only need 55 for PvE. Uh, there's really no reason to speculate on that. There's a 15% you can't ignore. So for Wyvern example, Wyvern has 70% 70, 70 effect resist. You need 55 to bypass as much as that as you can. There's 15 you can't touch. That's a brief explanation on that. And that goes for Golem, Banshee, Azamanic. Um, I believe all raid content is 50% effectiveness or effective resistance. So you don't need 55 for that. You just need 35. But you should be getting 55 anyways just because of hunts. So yeah, effectiveness. Any unit that debuffs, get effectiveness on it. You're going to need it. If you're going to use that unit for PvP on offense, build a lot more than that. Because people are stacking effect resistance now. Um, early game, up in the master, maybe up in the low challenger, that doesn't matter as much. But when you're pushing through challenger, it starts to matter. Um, and another big tip I can give you is build specific units for specific things. I mean, you could still take that unit into other content. It might not perform as well if you built it specifically for that content. But every unit should have its purpose. If you have a unit that can do multiple things, it's a great unit to build. Like, you could build units early game and it's just focus PvE. And then you could take those units in the PvP and perform pretty well up until you get in the mid-challenger. Um, once you get in the mid-challenger, you need specific units built uh, i'm not going to go in the meta i mean you, you're going to need to build a unit specifically for pvp a uh, perfect example right here is crimson armin crimson armin i have built for pvp if i was building her to tank she would not have that low hp she would not have that low defense she would have some more effectiveness if i was trying to taunt something in pvp or pve sorry I would like more effectiveness on her for PvP, but her job is to go relatively fast and give my units immunity for my slower counterattack teams. She helps me survive a cleave. That's what I have her built for. I have that maxed out. I have this maxed out. So she just helps me survive a cleave so my units counterattack. That's basically what I use her for. And she's built to do exactly that. My Watcher Shuri, he doesn't have 100% crit because his too hard to get i would have to sacrifice too many other stats to get that but usually i run him with assassin Kali, who gives him another 10 so he's dangerously close to 100 percent he's built to just one shot somebody in pvp that's how he's built um i could optimize him a little bit more but he's pretty good where he's at you know his he, that that is his purpose his purpose is to one shot somebody in pvp my angelic or i guess i clicked on Terranor. Terranor is just built to defense break Wyvern 11. Um, he's not speed optimized with anything. I just pulled Kisei today, so I'm probably going to change my Wyvern team up and bench him, because uh, I don't want to use him anymore. I'd rather take his gear and put it on somebody else, but I just have extra pieces thrown on him so he can do his job in Wyvern. Can I use him in PvP? Yeah, I can, but I'm probably going to lose. I can bring him in Raid too, and it's all right there. Um... But they're built for specific roles. Like, immunity is not going to benefit you at all in PvE. Not really. Maybe first turn a queen when you don't want to get uh, debuffed or something. Right off the bat. So they can be useful. Very rarely is you, unit, or immunity <laughs> any good in PvE. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah. Build your units to perform a specific role. And another reason that is important, like we'll, we'll pop into Arena over here real quick, just so you can have some visuals. Your defense team, like you can't get in here and like when, when you set this thing up, it does not save. Like it saves the units, but it doesn't save the gear you have on them. So say I have my Crimson Armin in here, right? And she has my Max Arius. But then, oh, I need my Rose down here to do Wyvern 11. So I take my Arius off of my Crimson Armin and stick it on my Rose to do Wyvern 11. Well, then my defense is short in Arius, and I'm easier to beat while I'm farming Wyvern for the next 10 hours, for example. You know? That's why my Crimson Armin is built the way she is. Her gear is staying there, and I'm not touching her. 
she's used on my defense team. And that's the same thing for Guild Wars. The only difference with Guild Wars is you can have your defense set up and as long as you're in a tower, nothing changes. You, you can completely strip a unit and it will not change in the defense until the Guild War is over. So what I can recommend if you are flip-flopping your artifacts, you know, throw in Uberus Tooth on your Luna instead of having Joker on her in PvP. You can have that there until you're set in the tower, and then you can put your Joker on and go do some Wyvern with her. It will not affect your Guild War defense. But that's one reason why I build specific units to do specific things. I build specific units for Guild War, specific units to farm Wyvern, specific units to do raid, and I leave it like that. I can bring certain units to do other things, but I don't like moving their gear around because say I'm doing raid and I took an artifact off of, you know, I took my Rod of Amaryllis or something off of Angelica and put it on a different healer or whatever to do raid. And now my Angelica is sitting in Guild War defense and I have to go through a Guild War with no artifact on. You're going to be a lot easier to beat. So it just benefits you to build specific units to do specific things. And before you decide to build a unit, figure out where you want to take it first. Like, since I just pulled Kisei today, I want to... Just take her and three-man Wyvern 11 with her. That's what I want to build her for. Can I use her in PvP? Yeah, of course. I could take her in there. That's one good thing about most of the DPS in the game. You can use them in offense. But your defense, you need to make those separate. Or you're going you're, you're gonna to struggle. You'll, your defense rate, win rate is going to drop. You might not win any at all if you're running a bunch of PvE units in there. So you, you got to build your defense separate. It's, it's a whole, like, think of it as a different game. It's like tower defenses. You know, you're building your towers to be as strong as possible to fend off any attackers. You don't want to constantly take archers out of your freaking tower and, you know, you're shooting at them less. For, you know, there's an analogy. Um, pretty much covered everything, I think. If I was unclear or I was confusing or whatever, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you appreciate these kind of things, uh, give me a like. If you want more, subscribe. Um, there's that bell if you really like my voice that much and you want to listen to it right away. But that's it. Um, you guys have a good day. Later.